So here we're told we have a system executing a power cycle. Let me sketch that out. So here we have a hot reservoir, and then there's some energy transfer into our system. It's producing some work. And then there's some heat transfer from the system into a cold reservoir. Okay, and we're told that the power cycle receives uh, 1,050 kilojoules by heat transfer, so the QH is 1,050 kilojoules, at a temperature of 525 Kelvin. So that means that the hot reservoir has a temperature of 525 Kelvin. And it's discharging 700 Kelvin by heat transfer at 350 Kelvin. So QC is 700 kilojoules, and the temperature of the cold reservoir is 350 Kelvin. There are no other heat transfers. Determine if the cycle is internally reversible, irreversible, or impossible, and then determine the thermal efficiency and compare this value to the maximum possible efficiency. So to determine if the cycle is internally reversible, irreversible, or impossible, let's go ahead and consider the Clausius inequality. Okay, so the Clausius inequality is, looks like the following. We'll go ahead and write it down and I'll describe it. So there's the Clausius inequality. It just says that the heat transfer into the system, so let me draw a little dashed line here. This is our system. So the heat transfer into that system over the cycle divided by the absolute temperature where that heat transfer is occurring. That's So we're told that it's coming in at 525 Kelvin it's going out at 350 Kelvin, so that those are the absolute temperatures. And this is integrated over the boundary of the system. So here there are just two places where we have heat transfer across the boundary. There's one place here and one place there. So that has to be less than or equal to zero. So let's go ahead and substitute in. We have QH coming in at TH. So I'm just evaluating this. So at this point, let me just kind of highlight in blue here. So we have that point, which is this one. And then we have this point down here. Let me highlight it in a different color. Oops, sorry, there. I'm going to erase that bit. So we have that point there, and then that'll look like the following. And the reason there's a negative here is because it's coming out. Remember, this is into the system. So here it's actually coming out, so that's why I have a negative here. And then we can plug in the values. This will be 1050 kilojoules over 525 Kelvin. And this will be 700 kilojoules over 350 Kelvin. And you work out those numbers, and it comes out to be zero. Okay, so our when we evaluate our Clausius inequality here, it comes out to be a zero. So that's certainly possible. And in fact, not only is it possible, this is a this would be considered an internally reversible system. It's internally reversible. It's internally reversible because the equal sign here only holds true if it's internally reversible. If you had some irreversibility, then it'd be less than. And if it was impossible, then this integral would be greater than zero. But we found that it's equal to zero, so, so it's internally reversible. Okay, so that's part A here. Now part B is to determine the thermal efficiency of this power cycle and then compare it to the maximum possible efficiency. So as far as comparing to the maximum possible efficiency, the thermal efficiency we get for this will be the maximum possible efficiency because it's internally reversible. Since it's reversible, it'll be at the maximum possible efficiency. So our efficiency will be the reversible uh, efficiency of this power cycle, and that's going to be 1 minus Tc over Th. Remember, this expression only holds true for reversible, internally reversible power cycle. We can go ahead and substitute in here. This will be 350 Kelvin all over 525 Kelvin. And when you work out the numbers for this, this comes out to be 0 0.33. So it's 33% is our efficiency. Now another way we could have done this is we could have found the efficiency like this. We could write it as the efficiency, just using our standard definition for efficiency, it's the work generated by the power cycle divided by the heat coming in to the power cycle, which would be the QH in this case, because that's 
that's the heat coming in to our system. Our work, we can find that by applying the first law to the system operating over cycle. Remember the first law looks like this. And since we're operating over a cycle, that term is going to be zero. And then our W by will be Q into, and in this case, Q into is going to be a QH minus QC, because we have heat transfer coming in here, heat transfer going out there. So this will be 1050 kilojoules minus 700 kilojoules, right? And then, uh, let's see, what would that be? That would be 300 and... 50 kilojoules, I think it is, if I did my mental math correctly here. So then this would be 350 kilojoules divided by the QH, which was 1050 kilojoules, and that should come out to be 0.33. So this expression for the thermal efficiency, we can apply all the time, whether it's a internally reversible or an irreversible uh, system, we can always apply this. This always holds. It just comes straight from a definition, so we can use it all the time. This one is only if if the system is reversible, internally reversible. Since in this case the system is internally reversible, these two will be equal to one another, which is what we find here. Okay, so I think that covers everything we need to do for this example. So we'll